Hi everyone! If you're setting up a stock tank pool this year, you might be in the same situation that we are in, where the only pumps available are upwards of $300. We really wanted an Intex pump, but we were just too late getting into it this year. By June, Intex was already out of stock of the two models we wanted, and people were reselling them for three dollars to $400. That's a hefty markup for a pump that's only 60 bucks. So we decided to put together a temporary solution to get us through the rest of the summer. So far it's working really well, and it only cost about $100. We got this household filtration system at Home Depot, two 3 4 inch male adapters, two rolls of 5 8 inch inner diameter, 7 8 inch outer diameter vinyl tubing, and four little hose clamps. To make the tubing easier to attach onto the pump and filter, boil some water. You want it nice and hot. Then put the hose clamp on the end of the hose and submerge that end in the water for a short while, maybe 30 seconds. This makes the tubing more pliable and you can wiggle it right onto the filter. Use the hose clamp to secure it. We had an old water pump from a Winnebago that we're renovating. Yes, there's no shortage of projects around our house. And we got it all hooked up, got power to the pump, it worked just fine, but this pump isn't meant to run continuously, so it would overheat and stop working after about five minutes or so. So we went to Harbor Freight and got a submersible pond pump and hooked it up to the filter. Wowee, does the pool get dirty, even with the ghetto tarp cover on. No place is safe from dirt in the desert. So we run the pump and filter for a few hours each day, and you can really see how much dirt the filter is picking up. Before we start it up, we clean the filter. It's really easy to do. The hardest part is turning this lever off. Then press this red button on the side to release the pressure. Unscrew the canister and hose it out and hose off the filter really well. Then plop it back in the canister, make sure the o-ring is still there and screw it back into the filter housing. Then turn the lever back to the filter position and press the red button again to release the trapped air. Look at how clear the water is. We're using this floating chlorine tablet dispenser that other stock tank pool owners have recommended and it's working great. We were using the pool for maybe two to three days before the chlorine tablets arrived and the water was already getting cloudy. The dispenser took about two days to really clear it back up. This floating dispenser has a little door on the back so you can control the amount of chlorine that it'll dispense. You can have all these little holes open, or you can even turn it all the way off, which is what we're going to do. Then the chlorine will just dissolve out of the holes on the bottom, and that should be all we need. We got this fun little ducky temperature gauge, and he's telling me our water is about 87 degrees. It hasn't gotten hotter than that, but if it does, we can leave the cover off overnight and it'll drop about 10 degrees. Another thing that's happening is the pool noodles shrink. In the morning and sometimes in the afternoon we'll come out and there are big gaps between the noodles. It's very strange. So that's our pump and filter set up. It's not very attractive, but at least it's keeping the pool clean and usable this season. Hopefully next year we can start early enough to get a more permanent pump and filter set up. I ordered some bamboo fencing, so in the next video in this series I'll show you what we do with that.